quality online teaching series uh, feedback strategies for your online course. I will be your presenter this afternoon. My name is Tracy Miller and I'm the online teaching coordinator. And this is my email below in case you um, ever want to reach out to me uh, to talk about feedback strategies, to talk about your online course. I love having those conversations with everyone. Um, in this workshop in particular, um, you're going to discover some practical strategies on how to communicate with your students, um, how to grade your students' work online, and then other uh, feedback strategies for your supporting your online students. Um, and we're going to break that down into some um, different categories. Um, but let me kind of narrow down our focus to begin by saying that this workshop is really focused on your course delivery. So your, what is actually happening when you're teaching the course? Um, I'll dip into a little bit of the design just in planning how you're going to um, communicate and feedback with your, give feedback to your students. But really, we're going to focus on course delivery. We're going to spend the majority of the workshop this afternoon um, by talking about feedback from faculty. So those that are teaching the courses, um, how can um, you give your students some feedback? Bill, I see you just arrived. Welcome. Glad to see you as always. And I know you know how to use the interface, so you'll be all set. <laughs> All right, so the first piece of advice, the first strategy I have for feedback from faculty is to use um, this helpful feedback calculation. And so if you are providing feedback to your students and you incorporate these different elements, it's really going to help your students to be more successful in your course. Um, helpful feedback strategies, I think, is like a um, lifelong skill. It works for a variety of things. Um, for instance, family workers, coworkers, anytime you're giving helpful feedback, um, this can really help. Um, first, to provide evidence. So provide your students with specific examples um, that you're noting, um, that you're providing them feedback on. Um, quote or point to it if possible. Um, and then let them know what your expectations were for the work um, and then what their work, the evidence of their work actually showed. Um, and that can really um, limit their confusion um, and allow you to give some really specific feedback for them to be able to improve their work. Um, it also needs to be balanced. Um, it, Research will show that um, anybody receiving feedback or suggestions will um, really digest it uh, more positively if it's sort of balanced. And I often call it a feedback sandwich. So you're giving some positive feedback, um, incorporating more of that constructive or instructive feedback, um, but really letting them know that there are some things that are, are they're doing well with. But here's how we're going to help them out and improve their work. And finally, you want it to be measurable. So um, I always like to use the example for measurable. If you provide um, the students with an opportunity to do a draft assignment and you're giving them lots of feedback, maybe it's even phase one of a particular project. Um, if you give them a suggestion that's measurable, you'll be able to tell that that um, recommendation has been acted on. Um, I have a project in my course, in which case I have the students do a evaluation checklist. And um, part of the second draft that they submit, they must address how they acted on my feedback. And so I want to be able to remember um, what I told them in my measurable feedback, um, but also, again, to see if they acted on it. And we'll talk about these details um, quite a bit, actually. Um, so here's a, just a really practical strategy. And that is using your 
um, inline grading in Blackboard to be able to add comments directly onto the work. And so when you're doing that, again, you're, you're pointing out the evidence because you're literally pointing to it. Um, so in this example here, um, the participants were asked to state a, a purpose for a study that they were doing. Um, and in my case, I'm letting, I'm pointing to their actual purpose statement and I'm letting them know that I think that they should provide some more detail. Um, so it's not like I'm just adding random comments and saying, you know, in general, you should add more details. I'm being um, very specific by saying that um, the purpose area is where they need to add more details. Um, and there's a couple ways that you can do this that I've kind of uh, put out there. Um, in this case, I've, I've circled the purpose to kind of demonstrate that. I've also used the pointer. Another option is to highlight things. Um, and in the inline grading tool, you can actually color code them. So, you know, that can become your own scheme. But um, not only can you be specific by highlighting an area, um, but maybe you're color coded it to say um, green is good. Um, I'm a little nervous if I use yellow and red means you've just totally missed the mark. Um, whatever kind of thing you want to use for your um, kind of color coding your comments, you can easily do here. Um, also added some more um, of that specifics that I'm looking for in my comment over here on the side. Um, but knowing what I just went over, um, looking for evidence, um, being balanced and being measurable. Um, add to the text chat area any way you think that I could have improved uh, this feedback even a little bit more. And I'll go back to my formula for reminders. And I'll also, while you may be typing, I will just check my attendance to make sure I have everybody properly checked in. I'll start my own self um, feedback here and say that um, I think I could have been more specific about the details. Um, I could have said um, the, what I expected for more details, um, how long it should be, um, maybe what really needed to be flushed out um, in the purpose statement. Um, so I think I could have been a little bit more specific there. Um, when I made the statement about what do you think the goals were, um, maybe I could say you should have two to three goals um, to be a little bit more specific and a little bit more measurable. Uh, that way when I go back and look at the, the um, next iteration of the assignment or maybe the next similar assignment, um, they will have added in two or three goals um, like I added um, suggested in my feedback. Another way to really help out a good strategy for providing feedback to your students is to use um, Blackboard's interactive rubrics. That helps the students know what your expect expectations are for the assignment. Um, it can really drill down your expectations um, into these different categories that you create on the rubric. Um, but it also allows you to quickly grade the student's work by just simply clicking 
um, into the interactive rubric. And having that opportunity to do some quick feedback by just clicking on your expectations allows you to have some more time to be more personalized or more specific um, using the feedback area at the bottom of an interactive rubric. Um, in this case, my example I have here, um, the student has exceeded the expectations. Um, and it's a basic um, kind of length of a um, post that I'm looking for. Um, but really, if the student is not meeting the expectation, that might be the op more of the opportunity that I would use to give some specific feedback. Um, this is a very simple example here, but I might simply say you're below expectations because you only had um, 100 words in your answer. And in order to improve um, this grade, I would expect you to have at least 250 words. Um, that's being um, very specific on what they did wrong, but also um, a measurable goal for them to improve their work. Another strategy for feedback from faculty is to start a feedback bank, um, saving some common feedback phrases. And when I do this, um, I kind of bucket them into two different categories, um, positive feedback and constructive feedback. Um, and again, whenever I come up with a, a really good one, I'll kind of add it to my feedback bank pull that feedback bank out um, when I'm grading to be able to um, use those great phrases. Um, in this case, I think sometimes I like the positive ones better because we're so tempted to just put um, great work or nice job or I agree. And we really still want that positive feedback to be something that will help them grow and help them learn a little bit. Um, so. Um, I also like to kind of mix and match my feedback phrases. So even if um, this first example here, great work on outlining the project um, and seeing some improvement in identifying key concepts, if it doesn't work for a particular assignment, um, the structure is sort of there. So I might change it to great work on um, really synthesizing the two pieces of work that you were asked to read. And I'm seeing great improvement on succinct, succinct sentence structure or something like that. You can kind of mix up the what you're using in these feedback phrases. Um, in the constructive ones, um, you know, the, again, just being really specific and really measurable. Now these, um, feedback phrases that I've added to this particular bank here um, don't all go in the same class. I kind of mixed and matched them up for, you know, because I have a variety of participants that come to my workshop. So some of them might kind of make more sense to you or um, might be something that you use in your course more often. But the real strategy is just to have this feedback bank um, in order for you to be able to grade um, as effectively as possible while giving your student that feedback that they really need. OK, so we're going to have a little bit of an activity here. So I hope everybody is engaged and ready to go. Um, so I have a couple feedback phrases here that you might expect on a paper or maybe um, in a final grade of some assessment. So let's try to improve them a little bit. And you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit, picture an assignment that might be in one of your courses, and um, see if you can just, again, beef up these different feedback, typical feedback phrases. And you can add them to the text chat area and just add the number to them so we I'll know which one you're beefing up a little bit. I'll give you a few minutes to do that.
Kenton, did you have a question? Yeah, I'm not sure um, where, where I'm supposed to type. I don't see the place uh, where I am. Oh, sure. Yeah, so at the bottom of your screen, yeah. um, there's a purple arrow. Um, it's a purple area with a couple um, outward facing arrows. Bottom right hand side of your screen. All right, yeah. Uh, okay, and then the speech bubble is the first one um, in that series, and that's where the text chat area is. So I click on uh, the, the bubble? Mm -hmm. Click on the bubble. And then directly above that, there's a box that'll say, say something. And that's where you can type in your comment. You know, nothing comes up when I check, when I do that. There's a box up there that says, new private chat, learn how it works. <laughs> OK, well, it, it'll probably say something like, um, no, I'd rather not. Or is there a way to kind of exit out of that? Yeah, I can close the collaborate panel. OK, now try opening it back up again. Okay. There's the bubble there. There's a the number six there. OK, click on the bubble again. No, nothing happens. Do you still get that same message you had before? Well, it's a, it's a, it says new private chat, learn how it works, start tutorial. I don't think that's the what we were looking for. No, but is there something that will um, allow you to um, decide not to take the tutorial without closing the collaborate panel maybe saying no or i don't see anything <laughs> okay <laughs> right. well i if you want how just maybe you could verbalize how you would change um though since you have your microphone on well they could they could all be expanded considerably of course the work is just average it has some very good uh, substantive points but uh, it's uh, it has a number of stylistic uh, issues that ought to be addressed, uh, and uh, you've missed, uh, you know, uh, a couple of important points, which would then would you would tell what those important points were. Right. Good example. Now I will um, tell you what Marcia said, um, since you're not seeing the text chat area. Well, now, now, and, now there's something at the top that says find someone to chat with. Okay. Is that? Do you have an option for everyone? It just says find someone to chat with, and I think I can type in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll just. Uh, can you see it, or should I just push enter? Or what should I do? Hit enter and see what that does. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I, I hit enter, and it just sits there. Right. It was probably looking for you to type in somebody that you wanted to chat with. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will we will definitely work on that, Kenton, probably um, afterwards if you're not having success with it. But I always do read out the text chat area so that it's in the recording. So um, Marcia said, this work is average. Consider adding more information on the key findings of the project as well as the impact on the population. Sure. Good. So definitely more details. Um, and I can, I can see where um, it would also be measurable. Uh, Bill said, you've got the notes and rhythms learned so well. Now we can work to make the music performance to be more expressive too. Uh, I love that. It's very forward thinking um, on what's going to be coming up next and, and where they can make improvements. Um, Anna said, at this point in the course, there should be substantive points and critical thinking displayed. Focus on adding key findings to your work. OK, the, say, trying to the say something box did come up when I clicked on on something, so I could okay. I, do that if I wanted to. Yeah. Great. <laughs> do you oh, see wow. everyone's text chat area now? That's how it came up when I when I clicked and saw everybody. Then there's then the box at the bottom opens up and says say something. So okay, great. I'll I'll get out of the audio now and just do the normal stuff here. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay, great work, everyone. Um, hopefully, you're grabbing all of those great ideas and adding them to your um, feedback pool so that you have them for your next assignment. 
So here's another great strategy when you give feedback uh, to your students. Um, consider using screencasts. Now, screencasts are um, tools that allow you to um, do a recording of what is going on in your screen. Um, and we are actually doing a um, screencast in a way by recording our Collaborate session this afternoon, but there's some other tools you can use for screencasts. But let's say that you're um, giving your students some instructions on how to use something, and um, you just want to give them that multiple modality advantage of um, having them see what you're clicking on and also hearing your voice. Um, it's actually what I would have done, Kenton, for you on how to find the text chat area afterwards. I would kind of go through it and point to the right buttons and, and then you would have those instructions. You can use screencasting with your own students. Um, you can also use the Helix uh, Media Library, and I use um, Media Library. It's actually a, a video streaming service, and so any feedback that you do on a video, you can add it to um, the library, and that way that video is not taking up room in your course. Because anytime you create a video and it's just a video, an MP4 file or some other sort of um, video file, um, it can tend to take up large amounts of space on your course. So having it on the video streaming library um, is great for um, having it and not using up space, um, but it's also completely protected um, with the NIU um, bubble, so you don't have to worry about the video um, going out into the world somewhere. Um, also consider any way you would like to create some um, automatic feedback. And one of the ways you can create automatic feedback to your students is to use the feedback area in your test questions. So if you use quizzes or exams or tests in Blackboard um, and you created different questions, um, you might scroll down far enough to realize that there's this feedback area. And again, when you're creating tests and you're adding a lot of questions, um, see, sometimes that feedback can seem um, like a, a lot of extra work, but so it just really depends on um, maybe the time you have, the importance of the assessment, um, or if this is more of a formative assessment, um, so that feedback is really going to help them um, when they have maybe a more higher stakes assessment. And so the way it works in Blackboard is you have the opportunity to add feedback into the correct response. So if the students um, do respond correctly, um, again, it could be just a nicety or it could be a little bit more. In this case, because it is um, an automatic response, you probably do not want to get too specific with your correct response feedback. And then there's an opportunity for incorrect response feedback. Now, this may be something that you do have the opportunity to be a little bit more specific. Um, I like to use the example when you um, would want to point them back to a particular article that they should review in order to respond to this question correctly. Uh, maybe a specific part of a chapter, if it's a chapter exam or something like that. Um, this is a great area to just say, um, oops, you're wrong, but here's how um, you can find the right answer and review it. Um, for the next assessment. And maybe it's even something where you're going to have the students um, be able to have multiple attempts, um, and this almost becomes their study guide. Um, another important strategy when we're talking about feedback from the faculty is to communicate um, how you're going to provide them with feedback and how often you're going to be providing them with feedback. Um, so that's a little bit of the design role, the planning role. When you're um, putting a course together, you're going to think about um, the kinds of feedback, where your students can find that. Um, but 
it's also important to really commit to you and your students that you are going to provide them with feedback um, in a timely fashion. So in this example right here, I've um, said that I will grade and provide you with feedback within three days of the assignment due date. Um, that's just my choice and when I would like to um, commit to um, providing them with feedback. Uh, it's the number is not important. The important part is that you let them know about that. Now, not all things are going to happen in three days. If it's a major um, project or a major paper, um, the, you may need more time for that. If your course is running on an eight-week schedule instead of a 16-week schedule, you may actually want to um, beef up that uh, feedback schedule. But just whatever it is, let your students know. Um, hopefully, they won't be asking before you're ready. Um, but they also won't have um, that anxiety of wondering um, when it's going to come. Um, the next important uh, strategy for feedback is to let them know where they can find their feedback. Um, I received a question last week on this. Um, the students couldn't find it, and it really just was a matter of they didn't know um, where they could find it. So um, there's actually a Blackboard tutorial, and I'm going to add the link into the text chat area and so you can add this into your course and it just walks the students through step by step um, how to um, check their grades and to find their instructor feedback. Um, I also have a um, another resource to share with you. This is um, from Rutgers and it's just a bit about how to find um, that inline grading feedback um, that um, students somehow um, just aren't quite sure where to find it. And so you definitely don't want to spend all of that time um, on this great feedback um, and, and really meaningful interaction with your students and then have them never be able to find it. Um, and sometimes they think, um, you know, it's something that they're afraid to ask. And so if you provide them with this, um, then, then they'll have it at their disposal. Um, so some ideas, just kind of wrapping up this idea of um, feedback from faculty. Um, the draft assignment. Um, giving them a shot at something to um, give you an opportunity to give them feedback. Um, it could be feedback from you. It could be feedback from others in the course, which we're going to talk about too. Um, so a draft is a great idea um, for that assignment um, that maybe is going to build again into something that's a higher stakes assessment. Um, remember to use whole course feedback. Um, after you do your grading, send out an announcement and say grading is done, um, especially if grading is done early. Um, they're excited about that. But you can give kind of a general synopsis of how the, they did in general um, on a particular assignment. Maybe um, teasing out a couple details um, that you think, again, were done really well or that could really stand improvement. It's not so different than what we do in our face-to-face -face courses, where we'll, we'll talk in the course about how everyone did on a particular assessment. Um, this, in this case, we're just using an announcement to do that. And then I always like to hear your ideas. So add to the text chat area any ideas that you may use um, when providing feedback to your students. And if you're adding some ideas, I'm just going to slowly transition into the next session. Oh, um, repeat the question. Um, what I'm looking for is any ideas that you have for feedback strategies with your students. So in your experience, um, what have you done that you think is just a really good way to give your students feedback?
And again, I'll kind of just move into, um, you don't have anything different to add. That is just fine. That's it. I Sometimes I'm happy with myself that I, um, I covered the bases. Um, but feedback from others is also an opportunity uh, for your students. Um, and this has a, a two-pronged advantage. One, that the students are um, getting more feedback because they're getting it from each other, but they're also engaging with each other and they're, they're experiencing that interaction with each other. And they're not feeling quite as isolated as they may um, in an online course that hasn't been built to have this interaction in it. Um, and so um, students, can give each other feedback. Again, in that draft version of assignment, uh, you would do it a little differently than just doing a basic submission. The students might add it to a discussion area. They may add it to a blog. Um, they may share a link to um, be able to share their work in OneDrive or a Google Doc or something like that. Uh, there's a many different scenarios that students can do this. Um, and, and that actually um, reminds me that students may actually do this on their own. Uh, when I was on a, uh, in an online program um, several years ago, um, we were often encouraged to work in groups. We had a lot of group projects. Um, so the groups became very adept at um, you know, working together and giving each other feedback. But even when we weren't assigned a group, uh, we kind of formed a cohort and smaller groups, and we would still be sending each other um, work in order to solicit feedback, in order to be able to um, submit that best work possible. Um, the other idea of feedback from others could be experts. You have the opportunity to tap into other experts um, by either adding them into your Blackboard course as a, a guest or even having them host a discussion board. I've done that where um, we'll pick out a topic for a discussion board and um, I'll maybe open it up for two or three days and ask an expert in the field to chime in there and respond to discussion questions. Um, but they could also do a collaborate session like we're doing this afternoon, um, where the students can join um, an expert, again, in the field um, and maybe receive some feedback on their work, their ideas, maybe their project ideas. Um, you can bring those experts into your course. Um, here's a, diff a couple different ways, some tools you can use um, to get some interaction and comments um, from other people um, besides yourself. Um, I mentioned using blogs and wikis. That's a great way to um, get some comments. Um, I have had, Ken says, I have had good results requiring students to, to submit drafts of their papers at the NIU Writing Center. That is an excellent suggestion. Thank you so much. Um, in, in some cases, I think that uh, could be an underutilized center, but they're so valuable. And um, just so you know, the Writing Center now does um, virtual uh, consultations. So they actually, um, use Google Hangouts. So they are doing tutoring sessions um, with online students. Um, so I'm so glad you mentioned that. It's a great suggestion. Um, so blogs and wikis. Um, blogs and wikis give the students um, an opportunity to add their work to Blackboard and easily be able to comment on it. Wikis in particular, they can actually um, make some edits to the students' work um, that might be better for that group project I was talking about. Um, wikis have version control, so you can always go back and see um, how the work evolved and who contributed to the work. Um, I always like to introduce a new tool. So in this case, I have um, VoiceThread up here. VoiceThread is um, something where you can add a PowerPoint presentation uh, to VoiceThread. 
and then you could add your voice to it um, through a phone call. You can use a speaker. There's just a, a you can even do text um, to speech in there if you want. Um, so that's great. It's similar to what I was talking about with the screencasting, but the advantage is other students can join this voice thread and they can um, add their comments, their voice comments, directly into the PowerPoint presentation. So if they want to point out something in slide five of a pre another student's presentation, they can add that directly into that slide five. A really cool to, to, tool to use. Um, it's a limited free tool, meaning you can use it um, a certain amount of time, certain amount of space, and then there's um, some upgrade features. So, but it's a good thing maybe to try and see if it's valuable enough um, to kind of justify that expense um, to kind of move up to the Pro Tools. And then any other annotation or editing tools um, that you find out there that makes sense um, for your discipline, for your course, um, can be used. And, and there's just um, a host of them. Look for annota online annotation tools and see if there's some that you like out there. Um, when you are soliciting feedback from others, um, and again, it often comes in this category of group dynamics, couple strategies you want to um, address with your course. You may want some civility contracts. What do you mean by um, that, that thoughtful, helpful feedback? Um, so it doesn't cross any lines on um, uncivil behavior in your course. Um, let them know what you consider civil behavior and let them know what the consequences are for uncivil behavior. Um, you can definitely point them in the direction of um, student conduct and the student conduct office. They can, they can help um, with that matter even for your online course. Um, let your students know what checkpoints there may be. So um, how often are, should they be checking in with each other? But also how often might they check in with you? If they're developing this um, shared document, for instance, um, and they're kind of just doing their own thing in their group, but you still want them to check in with you every two weeks, every four weeks, what it is, whatever it is, um, think about what those checkpoints are. And then remember, to use any kind of alternative tools um, that you have at your disposal. Um, and we do a um, tech, more of a tech-based um, in the spring workshop. So we'll have some ideas on some alternative tools that you may want to use. Um, but don't feel like you're locked into using Blackboard tools only is the, is the main point of that. So again, just to wrap up this, sesh, this section, um, what are some ideas I have? Um, think about doing peer reviews or critiques. Um, I use this picture here of an art museum because um, the performing arts and visual arts, um, it, critical um, Reflection critical reviews are very important to those disciplines. Um, so um, use them, take advantage of that. Use them in your own course. Um, have them um, pair up and review each other's paper. Um, give them a copy of the um, rubric, um, kind of moving down to this next idea. Um, having them do observations. Um, pulling out the rubric that you are eventually going to grade them on and having them do these um, peer evaluations um, can be very useful. Um, plan and map out time for the students to have this interaction. Um, don't make it just an add-on um, because um, if you really value the peer observation, the peer review process, um, make sure you say that one of this week's activities is going to be um, some peer review, some peer observation. Um, and that shows value in the activity. Um, and that's a, a good segue into my third 
type of feedback, and that's self-reflection. So that's feedback to yourself. And um, the time and space is just what I was saying with the um, peer review, peer observation. You really want to make intentional time for this um, because time does mean value. Um, it's, it's part of their obligation to the course. That also may mean that if it's a peer observation, you're going to need to maybe add a couple points on there um, to uh, motivate them to um, do their part of the peer observation. Um, but the reflection time is also going to be um, something that maybe you give them um, a few points for um, if they're going to be doing maybe a weekly reflection or a monthly reflection. Um, so then you want to make sure you give them the space on Blackboard or another tool. Uh, Blackboard has a journal. Um, the journal can be set up where um, only you and the students see that. That could be your um, own personal dialogue um, between you and your students um, in their journal. So you're letting them know that if they're going to be journaling on a um, weekly basis, they have that opportunity and space to do so. Um, let them know a little bit what you're looking for with the reflection journal. Sometimes it can be very specific to the topics of the week. It could be a journal for progress in a project or a major paper. Um, or you just want them to reflect on how they're using their time wisely um, in any of their courses, really. Um, these are just some ideas on allowing the students to, through their reflection, give themselves some honest feedback in how they're doing on the course. Um, I also recommend that it doesn't have to be perfect. Just let them know that they need to be honest. On, they're being honest with themselves. Um, and so, um, you know, you still want to be supportive um, and, and maybe push them to that next level, um, but allow them to be a little bit valuable um, when they're doing this reflection. Um, and hopefully that becomes more of a habit for them. A um, couple ideas um, when we're talking about feedback from yourself. You may want to start incorporating the Blackboard portfolio tool. Um, and, you know, the basic portfolio um, idea is to um, be able to have the students post um, artifacts in a centralized area, maybe across um, their entire program over multiple years. Um, these artifacts should show growth in their work. Um, so uh, having them do a portfolio assignment but also reflect on it um, is going to help them to be able to identify their growth in the course or in their program. Um, so if you're interested in the Blackboard portfolios, um, it's one of those things where we have an entire workshop and lots of information on the Blackboard portfolios. Um, but adding that, that self-reflection, that feedback, um, is a really great use for portfolios. Um, the journals we've talked a lot about. Uh, could be a Blackboard journal, or you could just um, encourage them to um, start their own professional journal where they're um, maybe first identifying their goals for the course and then how they're meeting them. Um, Self-scoring, the last one. Um, can they, um, again, pull out your rubric that you're going to use to grade them and kind of do a self-score? an honest self-score of their themselves, and then maybe think about three things, um, two or three things that they would do to improve their work. Um, and again, maybe you're giving them a couple points for doing that um, self-scoring, um, and then you want to see if they've acted on um, the three things that they identified for themselves to work on. Um, how do students give you feedback? So this is the sort of the last um, piece that um, that some things we do, some things um, we may be a little nervous about doing, 
but I'm just going to throw them out there as some strategies um, for just making that feedback loop 360. Um, there are ways that students can give you some feedback. Um, first is the mid-semester course evaluation. So um, everyone is pretty familiar with course evaluations, um, something that your department um, kind of gives out. Um, there's, the blue evaluations are kind of the most prominent course evaluations that the online courses are using. Um, but if you take those questions and create a mid-semester evaluation, um, you're going to get a heads up of how those course evaluations are going. Um, I add a couple extra questions to my mid-course evaluation um, in my department. Um, in ETRA, the, the course evaluation is still very face-to-face um, -face centric. So it talks about the room being um, well lit and, you know, not too distractive. And, and so I always ask my students um, to evaluate the environment that they've created for themselves. And if they realize that um, they have a lot of distractions around them, um, they're going to maybe stop and think about that and um, change their environment mid-course where they can still make some improvements. Um, the next one, to review your question and answer forum. So if you use a help forum or question and answer forum in your online course, at some point, go back and review those questions. Um, of course, you're going to be answering them as they come up, um, but if there's that question that is coming up frequently. That is the feedback to you that you may need to make some um, clarifications in the course structure. Um, of course, there's always things like broken links. They'll let you know that um, they clicked on something and it didn't go anywhere. Um, go back and review those questions and then make adjustments um, to your course design or maybe the way that you're approaching the course. Um, so th those questions do not come up as frequently. Um, as they have them. Um, and then the final thing that I would like when feedback from your students is I would like to hear feedback from you. It's part of our assessment in faculty development. Um, so I will be sending it out with a copy of the workshop recording, but I'm also adding the link into the text chat area. So if you're the type of person that likes to just kind of get that done, go ahead and click on that link and uh, give me some feedback um, on what you think of um, this particular workshop. Um, I've worked I've given this workshop a few times now. Um, I always review it. Um, so if you do use recordings, um, if you do live sessions, go back and review your own um, recordings maybe um, six months or before the next semester stops. Go back and take a look at them. Um, again, it's going to be another bit of that self-review -re -re um, because you're going to you're going to notice things when you do it again. But anytime um, you give me feedback on my workshops, I try to um, incorporate that into the next iteration of the workshop. Um, I'm definitely taking um, Kenton's recommendation for submitting drafts of papers to the Writing Center. Um, so I, I will give you credit for it, but I really appreciate that. Um, I'm also looking at um, some of the great recommendations you had for improving those um, feedback phrases. Um, so I always learn a lot from all of you in these sessions. Does anyone have any questions as we sort of wrap things up? And you can ask your question by adding them to the text chat area or turning on your microphone. We've got a small group.
You are welcome. I'm glad it was helpful. And like I mentioned before, I will be sending out a recording of this. Um, so whether you're recording it or you think about um, some questions, um, you know, half an hour tomorrow, it's fine. Just send me an email and I will be happy to respond to you. Um, I'm also happy, again, to have um, any additional chats with any of you. So um, here's my email again to be able to contact me. Uh, I love talking online course um, strategies um, and working out um, some of those wrinkles that you were hoping to smooth out a little bit. Um, I actually have a consultation um, this afternoon with a faculty member that wants to run some ideas by me. So um, I'm really excited to hear from her and, and see what kind of challenges she'll have for me. Um, so um, that's what I do. So I'm happy to hear from anyone about that. Um, you might be still typing in some questions, so I will hang out to be able to answer them for you. But again, I just want to thank everyone for joining me this afternoon. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to.